Hello and welcome to the lesson for today. What we're going to be doing right now is correcting lesson 4-1, page 98. So we're going to go through corrections on what this is. All right, so we're going to make a table here, y equals 2x plus 5. So we need to fill in every y value here. So we're going to have to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 separate problems. And what we're going to do every time is replace this x value with these different numbers. So they're asking us to plug in a negative 2 first. So 2 times negative 2 plus 5. So we have negative 4 plus 5. And remember that interview inter Jer review. So you can either use that or you can use your calculator. Okay, so we get negative 4 plus 5 is 1. Then the second number that we're going to plug in here is going to be a negative 1. So 2 times negative 1 plus 5 is negative 2 plus 5, and we get 3. Then the third number they want us to plug in is a 0. So 2 times 0 plus 5. So we have 0 plus 5 and we get a 5. And the next one is going to be 2 times 1 plus 5. So we have 2 plus 5 is 7. And then the last one when we plug in a 2, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 5 is 9. All right, number 2. <clears throat> you can see here that they started a chart and they picked numbers like negative 8, 0, and a positive 8. The reason they're doing that is because when we look at this fraction, 3 over 8 times what? Minus 5. So we're always going to be filling in this x value right here. Well, if we put in a 1, 3 eighths times 1 is 3 eighths. And then 3 eighths minus 5 is going to give us a fraction answer here. So when we put in this first number that they're asking us to, which is a negative 8, we can simplify or reduce. So you can use your calculators. But if when we simplify and reduce, this 8 divided by 8 turns into a 1. So we end up having 3 times negative 1 is a negative 3 minus 5, and we end up with a negative 8. Okay, now when we put in this next one, we get a 0, so the second one that they're having us put in. So again, it's 3 eighths times what? We're replacing that x value, and they're doing a 0. So 3 eighths times 0 is 0 minus 5, and we get a negative 5. Now the third number that they're having us put in here is an 8. So when we do 3 eighths times 8 minus 5. So this 8 on top and this 8 on the bottom simplifies to 1. So 3 times 1 is 3 minus 5 is a negative 2. <clears throat> now we get to pick new numbers. So what numbers am I going to pick in here? Am I going to do a 2 or a 3 or any number between here? And the answer is no, because otherwise I end up with a fraction. So what else does 8 go into evenly other than 8 and negative 8? And that answer would be a 16. So I'm going to do 3 eighths times 16 minus 5, because 8 when I divide by 8, I get a 1, and when I divide 16 by 8, I get a 2. So I'm going to take 3 times 2 and get 6 minus 5, so I get a negative 1. Now, I can also pick the number negative 16, so that when I do this, I have 3 eighths times negative 16 minus 5. So when I divide these out, this is a 1, and this is a negative 2. So 3 times negative 2 is a negative 6, minus 5 is negative 11. <clears throat> now remember, you can be using your calculator and your fraction button in order to do these problems. All right, I'm going to erase my work here.
so we can do these next problems. All right, number three. So when we're solving number three, explain why each relationship is not proportional. So they're telling us that this is not proportional. So remember, we're doing y over x to see if something is proportional or not. So this would be 3 divided by 0, which is undefined. We can't do that. So this is undefined. And when we take 7 and divide by 2, we get 3.5. And 11 divided by 4 is going to be 2.75. And when we do 15 divided by 6, we get 2.5. And then the last one would be 19 divided by 8, and that comes out to be 2.375. So that shows that this is not proportional because all of these values would be the same. All right, number four. <clears throat> the easiest way here for number four is to look at this and see if it goes through the origin. Because if something is proportional, it would go through the origin. So this one is not proportional, does not go through origin. So it does not go through zero, zero. All right, number five. Oops, I skipped a few problems. Got to go back. Must have to scroll down here. Number five, complete this table, then graph. So this first one, we're going to go negative two. Hopefully I'm going to be able to do this. I'm going to do negative two minus one is negative three. And then the next one is going to be negative one minus one is negative two. And the next one's going to be 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. Then we're going to put in 1 minus 1 is 0. And then the last one we're going to put in is 2 minus, whoops, I didn't change colors, 2 minus 1, which is 1. All right, let's graph all of these pair, ordered pairs. So we're negative 2, 1, 2, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, and this last one was over 2, up 1. Now we could have picked any in between, <clears throat> so we can connect that. Number 6, how can you choose values for x when making a table representing real world situations? So if we're talking about real world situations, normally we are talking about positive numbers. All right, moving on. Number seven. So the relationship between the number of $4 lunches you can buy with the $100 school lunch card and the amount of money remaining. So they want to know if we would be able to connect these. So when we graph these, would we connect all of our dots? Actually, we'd be going this way because if we're spending money, we're always going to have less on there. So would we connect them? Or if we graph this, would they all be separate dots? Well, let's think about this. If you have $100 and you buy one lunch, it's going to cost you $4. You have $96 left. Is your card ever going to say $99 on your card? $98 on your card? $95 on your card? Because when we subtract four or more, it's going to go down to 92. So your card's going to go from $100 left to $96 left to $92 left. So this would be unconnected points. So number seven would be unconnected points. Number eight, the relationship between time and the distance remaining on a three mile walk. So let's think about this, three miles. That's where you start. And as you walk, 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 are you gonna eventually get home or get done with your three miles. So <clears throat> everyone walks at a different pace. So if we're just walking, this would be continuous because you can't just skip. So this would be continuous or a solid line. All right, number nine. Analyze the relationship Simone paid $12 for an initial subscription then renewal rate 
is zero dollars per year. So this situation can be represented by the year it is renewed. Ah, that's crazy how that happens. All right, so let's give this a try. So make a table. So in here, I'm going to put X, and this is the number of the years that you're going to have your subscription, and Y is going to be your total cost. Okay, so what happens is for you get, so we're not renewing it, so this is your renewal years. So when we first start, we are not renewing it, but your initial cost is $12. So the first year that you renew it, it's going to cost you $8. Well, you've already paid $12 for that initial year plus eight. So your total cost would have been that you have paid $20. Now the next year it comes around and you get a new prescription. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add eight to that. So now you have paid this company a total of $28. And the third year, we're going to add eight again, and we're at 36. And the fourth year would be at 44. Now notice I'm putting numbers, zero, one, two, three, four. I'm not picking numbers like 1.1 .1 or 2.2, because when you get a new subscription for the magazine, it goes for the whole year. So now label our axis. So this is our renewal years. And this one over here is going to be our total cost. So that first year we weren't renewing it, but we did have to pay 12, whoops, $12 for that cost in there. Okay, it cost us $12. What? It's cost us $12. Now, after year one, Year one, we renewed it. We have paid that company a total of 12, of $20, one twenty. After two, we have paid that company 28. After three years, we've paid that company 36. After four, we've paid that company 44. Now, does it make sense to connect it? And like I explained earlier, we're never going to pick a half a year or one and a half years or two and one six years. So this one makes sense for us to leave it unconnected. So we're going to have unconnected dots. We do not want to connect them. All right, hope this helps with your homework and answers any questions that you had.